We now will consider temperature and the zeroth law of thermodynamics. The zeroth law of thermodynamics is one of the most profound laws of physics. But when we start out, it won't look that profound. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take two objects that have different temperatures. Temperatures is measured by our thermometers, which we made, not kind of very scientifically. And we have one object, let's say, an object like this, and we hook some thermometer up to it, which I'll draw like this, and that thermometer has some reading, let's say that reading is 300 degrees Celsius, so considerably more than a boiling point of water. And we attach that, say by contact, with some other object, say over here, and that object has its own thermometer, and that thermometer, when you read it, let's say, says that it's 100 degrees Celsius. So originally they were separate. One was 300, one was 100, and we put them together. <coughs> and the question is, what will happen? And you probably know what was going to happen. The temperatures of both objects begin to change. Temperature... of the two objects begin changing. After some time the change stops and we say the objects are in thermal equilibrium. Just like we talked about static equilibrium. back earlier mechanics. So we're saying that we put these two together and notice I didn't make them the same size and that was intentional as I don't want you to think that them being the same size was necessary. It is not. So we have these two objects and their temperature has changed and you probably know that what happens is that the hot object begins to become colder that is its temperature goes down and the cold object's temperature goes up and that when they reach into thermal equilibrium and when their change is no more what's interesting is is that even if this is twice as big as that this object will not have say a temperature of of 100, 250 and this have a temperature of 150 and if they were the same size or whether they're different sizes they will not have different temperatures what they will have when the temperature quits changing is the same temperature and that's basically what the zeroth law of thermodynamics says in kind of its most profound way it says that every object has a property which we call temperature. And that property, temperature, is the same for two bodies in thermal equilibrium. So when this gets into thermal equilibrium, maybe this says it's 225 degrees C on that thermometer. This thermometer will also say it's 225 degrees C. It is not going to be true that they'll be halfway between these. That depends on how much one object is than the other and other factors that we're, we'll talk about later. It could be that it ends up at the same temperature and the temperature is 175. It could be that it ends up at 225. We'll talk about later how we determine what temperature it's going to be at. But what is definitely the case is that the temperature here of this object and the temperature here is the same. Call that T-E.
and that the temperature here, T1, and that temperature were not the same. So eventually, at some time, if you wait long enough, these two objects will have the same temperature, and that's called the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Now, sometimes people will write the zeroth law of thermodynamics in a different way. It's often written like something like this. If object A is in thermal equilibrium, with object B and object B is in thermal equilibrium with object C then object A is in thermal equilibrium with object C. In other words, if A is at a temperature of 50 degrees and B is in a temperature of 50 degrees, and if B is in thermal equilibrium with C, that means that the temperature of B is the same as the temperature of C. So if B is 50 degrees, C is 50 degrees. But if C is 50 degrees and A is 50 degrees, then they're in equilibrium as well. So it simply says for them to, if A has the same temperature as B and B has the same temperature as C, then A has the same temperature as C. Simple logic. But it's more than that. It means temperature is that property that determines this thing we call thermal equilibrium. And it's really the first fundamental scientific definition of what temperature is. Not this idea of cold, hot, and so forth. So, while the zeroth law of thermodynamics may seem like an obvious and almost silly statement, it is in fact a very deep idea and can be considered to form the scientific definition of temperature. Now, the question, of course, is what caused it to change in the first place? Why did temperature eventually stop changing? I mean, the fact that there had to be some thing that eventually determined where something stopped, that makes sense, and that's what we call temperature. But what was it that was causing temperature change fundamentally? Well, the answer gets back to one of the fundamental concepts we've already covered, and that's energy. We're going to look at the flow of energy, and we're going to look at our knowledge of the atomic nature of the microscopic world. And with only those thoughts, we're going to be able to develop great ideas that explain temperature and explain how the world works at the microscopic level. And this is one of the most important stories in history, because it was from this story the Industrial Revolution really sprang and took hold and developed. And the Industrial Revolution is what enabled people to buy goods that were cheap. It enabled them to have a quality of life. It enabled them not to have to work all the time. So therefore, you had a leisure. You had entertainment. You had movies, the ability to drive, the fact you don't have to work all the time, the fact that you live as long as you do. All of these things would not be possible without the development of these ideas that came about. So our very nature of our life, the fact that we have the quality of life we have, is directly related to this back here, to this zeroth law of thermodynamics. So far from being trivial, it greatly has improved the way that we live. And so we should be very fond of it. All right, we'll talk to you again on the next video.